Stephen Van Order with AmpiFI, and uh, we're going to take you on a brief tour of our production. This is where things happen that don't cost us money. Uh, our production team basically makes everything, and um, from harnesses to, uh, well, they assemble all of the ECUs here in-house. All of our cases uh, come in anodized, and we place them inside this machine, and the machine basically does the laser etching for us. Um, they turn out real nice. And so this allows us to, to be pretty flexible on, on what we do, uh, one product to another. So what we're doing is we're allowing the machine to set its own distance from the laser. It's a focus. And this machine does a, an auto focus by bringing the work surface up and it touches a little tip next to the laser and once it's detected that we're touching it then drops it to the the correct height and now we're bringing the laser back to its home position all right we'll pull up our file that we want in this case, this is going to be our MS3 Pro, and we will start. This machine uses a water-cooled CO2 laser to etch any logos that we want into the enclosure. And then we do this all here in-house, so that way we can use one enclosure for possibly multiple different products by simply putting a different image on it. And then once the machine gets done, that's what it'll look like. And we just let it run. We can go to, uh, to the next area. When we come back, they'll all be done, ready and waiting for us. This is a neat machine. This is a wave solder machine and we're about to run a PCB through the wave solder. And what it's going to do is, our PCB is here, and it's gonna get carried up a conveyor belt across a couple of stages of ovens. So it's gonna get the PCB and the materials that need to be soldered up to a high temperature. And then here at the very end, if you wanna see in here, just be careful, that is a huge pool of uh, molten solder and in just a second, we're gonna turn the machine on and the molten solder is going to come out of this area here and make a wave. It will look like a wave machine. If you've ever been to a, like a resort or been on a cruise ship that has a wave machine, well, we kind of have a wave machine here, but it's molten solder. And uh, we'll pump the solder uh, over the lip, make the wave, and the bottom of our PCB will skim the very top of that wave and then all the components will be instantly soldered to that PCB. What's the main benefit of using this machine, Ben? This is a great machine when you're doing uh, large volume uh, assembly. And it's one of the things that allows us to produce ECUs here, to produce them in, in quantity, and to produce them in a cost-effective manner so that we can then resell them at a reasonable price. So instead of turning a board over and having to secure all the components and manually soldering with the soldering iron, uh, one little leg of a component at a time and taking forever. This, you put the components in, run it through, and everything is soldered instantly. Saves a ton of production time. Uh, then our solder team can focus on doing, you know, some of the more uh, focused portions of their job. But this also lets us keep costs down because we're able to kind of build on demand rather than having to put in a large order um, at a contract manufacturer for surface mount devices for the, uh, you know, the lower volume uh, products that we sell. Yeah, absolutely. And then here the workpiece has come through and it's about to 
come out of the other end of the machine and it's completely assembled at this point. You can see that the wave is uh, off now. And then here's our assembled board. I'm not gonna touch the board, obviously it's hot. But there is our assembled board in the, uh, in the cradle. And all the points have been soldered. Uh, you can see that blue tape, that's just, it's protective uh, because there's a, that's a plastic connector. So that little bit of tape is all the uh, insulation that's required to protect the connector so it doesn't get burned. And then the next step for this, it'll, it'll go to one of our techs and they'll clean it up and make it look awesome and shiny and perfect. And then they'll, they'll do any, any handwork that's needed. You can kind of see the difference. You can see the, the chalky texture on the PCB. Uh, this is before final cleanup on the PCB. And, uh, okay. and then after it's cleaned up, it'll, it'll look something like this, very clean. That residue is gone. All the pins are shiny. Our case lids should be done. You want to see them? All right, so our machine is finished etching all of the case lids and uh, it's turned the laser off. Now at this point, a uh, PCB that you saw being assembled would be ready to be married uh, into an enclosure. And then once it's done, you get this. And then the next step would be to go through a QA process. Uh, do we want to see if they can put something on the Comax machine and, and run something on the Comax? This machine, all it does is de-spool the wire and it creates a, a fixed or a, a defined amount of tension on that wire to make this job easier on this machine. Uh, this machine has this series of rollers. These are actually wire straighteners. It's to ensure that the, the wire goes in like nice and smooth and flat. So it comes through here. Then it goes through another series of straighteners that apply a lot more pressure than these. And then the machine will, uh, will cut the end of the wire. It'll strip the end of the wire and it'll apply a pin. It'll actually crimp and punch the pin on. And then it'll spit the wire out on the, uh, on the other side into a bin. <laughs> have to wrench on it. First, what she does is she runs off a test piece, make sure the wire is coming out straight, make sure it's cutting and stripping appropriately. And then she runs a test uh, where she does a single uh, piece of wire with a terminal crimped onto it. And if that passes, then goes into full production. These short little wire sections are used in uh, certain of our MSP and P ECUs for the options connector. And we include a, a bundle of these with those uh, ECU products. And you can see we just make them here really quickly and in high volumes. And then we bundle them into the, uh, the accessory bundle, the accessory package with those ECUs. And then a minute ago, we saw just one short little six inch piece of, uh, piece of wire being manufactured. But if you make enough different types of wire come through the machine and you assemble them together, at the end of it, you get maybe a little wiring harness, something like this. And uh, this harness here happens to be for an ignition system on a GM LS engine and it plugs into the original LS wiring and allows you to adapt the uh, IGN-1A race coils uh, to, your, to your LS. This happens to be the driver side, but we make both the driver's and passenger side harness for that application. And uh, so after producing some wires and, and some hard work, you get one of these beautiful made in the USA, high quality wiring harnesses that are you know, ready to buy right now on our website. And they're you know, we try to be really well thought out on these. You'll notice uh, the kit includes a relay, some larger gauge wire. Uh, and this is because the IGN-1As are hungry. Uh, when you start really 
uh, making power and turning the dwell up on these coils. They want plenty of current. Yep. And so we, the factory wiring is not adequate, especially in a race application. So we feed them all the juice they need. Yep. So we actually uh, use, this is a 50 amp relay and we include the, the 50 amp fuse as well. And we just trigger off of your stock ignition wiring, but then we use our own 50 amp rated relay and this nice high quality wiring, flame retardant jacket, everything is labeled. And the, uh, the IGN 1A coils themselves, now they don't fire all at the same time, but when they do fire, they can sync upwards of 20 to 22 amps each. So to get the most out of an IGN 1A coil, you definitely want to have a high quality harness with big fat power wires and a nice relay and good connections. Helps minimize voltage drop, more voltage to the coil, more spark energy. So here's an order that is currently shipping out. This is a plug and play ECU, one of our MS PNP2 ECUs. This customer happens to have uh, an S13 uh, Nissan, which is a, a SR20 uh, DET, one of the turbo coil on plug Nissan motors. And then with every ECU that we sell, it includes a birth certificate. And that certificate is filled out by both the technician that assembled the ECU, as well as the other technician that ran the quality control on that ECU, because we want to make sure everyone gets a, a good quality, ready to go product. And they don't have the frustrations. It needs to work right out of the box. So interesting point about some of the Nissan ECUs is that the connectors are not available anymore. And so we actually have a, a customer supplied connector program for some of those more difficult to find uh, products out there. And so the Nissan guys, when you know they have one of those ECUs, they want to plug and play, they can uh, find a ECU out of the junkyard, we'll reclaim the connector off of it and build them their plug and play. Mm -hmm. So that customer actually sent us his OE PCM that came out of, came out of the car or came with his uh, engine swap that he bought and we received it. We removed the connector and when we built his new plug and play, we reused his connector uh, so he gets, a, he gets a brand new ECU with his connector that he already owned. And that way we can continue uh, producing these really cool plug and play ECUs for vehicles where you can no longer buy the parts to readily do so. We thank you so much for joining us today as we took a tour of the AMP EFI production facility. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of that kind of behind the scenes activity that most people wouldn't normally get to see. If you're ever in a Gainesville, Georgia area, if you want to come by in person, say hi, check it out, you know, stop on by, address is on our, on our website. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and hey, like and subscribe. You can uh, also reach out to us on any of our social media platforms or you can simply uh, jump on the website and shoot us an email.